Hello and welcome back to another episode of Devi Basics. In this episode, we're going to be talking about bundles. Bundles are a very useful way to organize your components in Bevy, and they can be used to build and insert multiple components at once onto a single entity, or to denote to a user what plugins are required in order to get specific functionality from your plugin to work. After my last video on Bevy Rapier, I had a few people ask how they can get data from their physics components onto the character or add an image to their physics objects. This made me realize that a lot of people are confused about how the Bevy ECS actually works and are confusing bundles on entities with objects from other game engines. So in this episode, we're going to clear up some of the confusion and talk about how bundles work in Bevy. So first up, what is a bundle? That's pretty simple. A bundle is a collection of components that can be inserted into an entity all at once. Back in previous versions of Bevy, there has been a significant performance gain by using bundles as opposed to inserting chain components. But in newer versions of Bevy, this performance gain has been abstracted away so that you get it even when using normal component insertion. But more on how Bevy has done that in a second. The bundle's original purpose, and mostly still is, to allow for components to be grouped together into functional groups allowing for plugin creators and the Bevy engine to easily group together components and tell users exactly what components are required to be inserted onto an entity for specific functionality to work, and to make sure that users do not forget to include what can be considered complementary or only helper components. This can also cut down on boilerplate since it allows you to only specify the values that need to be changed from their default. Components that may automatically be updated by the systems that run on top of them don't need to have their values set and instead you only need to set the values that deviate from the default. So I mentioned bundles being much faster than chain inserting in older versions of Bevy, but why is this important now? Well, mostly because it's still true, but the clever people at Bevy have come up with a way that makes the engine be able to basically use bundles wherever possible. And hopefully you are all using bundles in your games without even knowing, as opposed to chain inserting. And if you're not, please do, because it is much faster and more readable to do bundles than it is to chain insert all the components required. The only valid time I know of that chain inserting can be useful is if you have conditional logic that prevents you from building a single bundle that contains all the components and instead you need to wrap additional chain inserts in order to add components later on based on conditions. So what changed in Bevy to make bundles the default? Well, since they allow you to cut down on the insert calls, they also allow you to cut down on archetype allocations. In earlier versions of Bevy, there was no archetype allocations, at least not as far as I'm aware. We're talking pre 1.4 or so. Bevy's bundles were actually slower than chain inserting since the bundle would simply insert each of the components inside it, basically resulting in one additional function call. But once archetypes were added, which were an optimization to allow for querying and filters to be faster, Bevy was required to keep track of what components were on an entity in order to apply it to an archetype. This meant that when you inserted multiple components as a chain, Bevy needed to make multiple intermediate archetypes in order to have the transition for each component since it did not know what component you were inserting next. This is still the case in newer versions of Bevy, but to make it less confusing and to get those performance optimizations, the Bevy team have made it so that bundles are automatically implemented for all components, but also for tuples where all their constituent parts are made up of components. This can make it much faster and easier to create a one-shot bundle where you simply wrap the components inside a tuple. This means that only a single insertion needs to be made, rather than the corresponding number of insertions related to all the components, and the intermediate archetypes do not need to be created. This does mean that Bevy's 16 tuple rule applies, which is that it only automatically implements up to 16 long tuples. Though this is only a soft limit since it is possible to wrap 16 long tuples inside of larger tuples in order to apply a near infinite number of component insertions. I'm not entirely caught up on Bevy's current state, so it may actually have implementations beyond 16 components. You may still be confused as why inserting all the components in a bundle is faster than chaining them one after another. This is because when you add a component to an entity, it needs to have its archetype re-evaluated and moved, or a new one created if an archetype doesn't exist for all the components currently on that specific entity. When a component is added, Bevy will update an archetype so that it is now one that contains all the old components plus the new one. When you chain insert components, this process is linear since Bevy needs to do this every single time a component is added, but Bevy doesn't need an archetype for every possible intermediate state that has existed, only for combinations that actually have 
entities in them when the game does things like run queries, which is only performed at the beginning of frames or system stages. If an entity is updated multiple times in a single system, it is not necessary for it to have all the intermediate archetypes since it will not have a potential chance for a query to run while it is in any of those intermediate stages. This is where the performance improvements come along. When chaining individual component inserts, Bevy needs to make intermediate archetypes for each component you insert since it has no way of knowing what additional components will be added next and that they will be added right away. But if you use a bundle, Bevy can skip all the intermediate archetypes and simply only create the archetype that is finally needed and therefore avoids any additional waste in computation. This also cuts down on memory use since Bevy needs to keep all of those intermediate archetypes in memory in order to allow for to be used later because Bev is unaware that these archetypes will never actually have entities remaining in them. These are what I refer to as dead archetypes and they can also slow down things like queries since the query will need to check to see if that archetype has any entities in it even though it is not possible for entities to be left in it. This will slow down the query just because it will be doing compute that will always return zero. This can be seen with things like the global transform and the transform. The global transform almost always exists with a transform component and therefore all archetypes that exist as an intermediate step of adding a global transform and then adding a transform will almost never have entities remaining in them since you will almost always be adding the transform after. Whereas if you add them as a bundle, they never get credit in the first place. But that's enough about the boring performance. As Rust programmers, we should all now agree that bundles are the best way to go about adding components to our entities since they are faster and less memory intensive. If we wanted to write slow code, we would use something like JavaScript or Python. So what are the other potential uses for bundles? As I mentioned earlier, their primary use is to clarify what components are required for specific implementations of certain features from either the Bevy core engine or pl additional plugins. This can be seen with things like the Bevy sprite or mesh bundles. These are bundles that allow you to add a sprite or a mesh to your entity respectively. And this is where I think a lot of confusion comes from bundles because people can seem to confuse them with objects. In an ECS, each entity can only have a single instance of a component. But when you add a bundle, people seem to think that this bundle's components are separate from the other components on that entity. And therefore, two bundles with transforms will have two separate transforms, when in reality, they will share a singular transform. This does lead to a potential pitfall that I will explain at the end of the video. But in Bevy, there is no difference between components added individually and components added as part of a bundle. The functionality on systems is exactly the same. Similarly, any entity that has multiple bundles added to it that have overlapping components will simply treat them as singular components and will result in the functionality of both bundles working the same and sharing data without any copying or moving of information required. This can really demonstrate the power of an ECS over an object-oriented approach to game design since it means that we don't need to extract information out of one component and put it into another in order to allow certain functionality to work properly. This also means that we can build much more integrated libraries such as a core plugin, usually in most cases the Bevy game engine itself's built-in plugins, can specify components and bundles that are then used by other plugins and in their bundles in order to allow functionality to cross between plugins without any of the plugins having any idea that the other plugins exist. This can be seen really well with Bevy Rapier, where it uses the transform built into Bevy. This means that any other functionality built on top that also uses a transform doesn't need to know that the transform is being controlled by the physics engine. And therefore, there is no need to extract information out of your physics transform and into your some other plugin transform. Instead, they both just share a singular transform. A great example of this is if you wanted to add a mesh to a physics object, all you would do is insert a mesh bundle on top of your physics object. There is no need to move the transforms around. Simply adding the appropriate additional components will make the entity act like both a mesh and a physics object at the same time. This does lead back into our pitfall situation that I mentioned earlier. There are two potential pitfalls I'm going to mention in this video. One is a potential mistake for in place for errors. The other is more about the issue that bundles introduce in terms of cluttering and confusing APIs. First up is a common mistake that I tend to come across when I'm writing Bevy code quickly without thinking things through. And that is that multiple bundles can have conflicting components. If you're using the default implementation for a bundle, you could easily accidentally override directly specified data that you implemented earlier. Since most bundles will contain some data that is shared between other bundles, such as a transform is a very common shared component between multiple bundles, it is very easy to 
set your transform early on when you create an entity and then insert a bundle with just the default value set that will then override your previously set transform. This then resets the position of the object and can be confusing when you go to test things and things are not where you expected them to be placed. This can be easily resolved simply by reordering the way that the bundles are actually laid out. And I'm pretty sure Bevy's automatic bundle generator will check to make sure that there aren't duplicate components inside of a bundle. The drawback of this is it is still possible to insert a bundle at creation and then insert a bundle later that has a conflicting component that will then override that component. Now onto our case where we talk more about a design approach from where bundles can cause problems. And that is that bundles can really mess up a nice clean API by, by interfering with what I call component-driven design. This is what Bevy Rapier uses. Since the behavior of your physics object is controlled by what components are present or absent on the entity itself, means that Bevy Rapier cannot provide you with a singular bundle that contains everything you need for a physics object. Since bundles cannot selectively add or remove components from themselves, meaning that you must add all of the components in the bundle. This would remove the ability to not specify things like signals if the entity itself did not actually have the component, since you would need to specify the signal component. And then it becomes less of a present or absent of the component, and instead the component would need to hold on to a Boolean value or something to indicate whether it is or is not the trait of the component. This really doesn't make that much of an issue with something like Bevy Rapier if you have enough of an understanding to be able to know what components you need to add in order to get your physics object to work. But I tend to run across the issue of I will forget to add a spatial bundle since Bevy Rapier needs the object to have a transform in order to work properly. If you forget the spatial bundle, you will not be able to follow the object because it will not be able to move. But this is mostly just clutter in the API and doesn't really lead to issues or errors in the actual use of your game. I'd like to thank everyone who made it to the end of the video and especially my patrons who stuck through me for this period of me not making videos on my channel. I do have a Discord that I've been slightly more active on, link down in the description if you would like to come and talk to me more directly for video suggestions or any help. You can also support me on Patreon if you'd like to help me make this more channel more professional. On that note, I would like to start updating the video thumbnails on my channel. And so if you are yourself an art designer and would like to be commissioned to art to make thumbnails for my channel, please do reach out to me on Discord. I'm not sure what prices people would charge for this kind of thing, and I'm unclear on what kind of direction I want to take the art of the videos. But it would be appreciated if you could contact me with your price and what kind of idea you have for my thumbnails. I don't want something too fancy, but I would definitely like something more than just a plain black screen with text on it like I currently use. If the thumbnails end up being too expensive, I may not do every single video, but I may do major videos such as Bevy updates or UTDTG updates when I eventually get back into developing that. Or maybe just streams or other things of that nature where the thing, single thumbnail can be used multiple times. But again, please feel free to reach out and leave any suggestions or comments on what you want to see in future videos or the direction of the channel to go.